So I've been working on this 286 system, and most of my energy up to this point has been into this breadboard-based solution. And I think the breadboard work is probably slowly coming to an end here, uh, just because I've, I've kind of reached my goals as far as what I have on this breadboard. You know, I have everything from my clock generator to bus controller. I have a math coprocessor. I have a priority interrupt controller or a programmable interrupt controller. I have my uh, peripheral uh, PPIs, programmable peripheral interfaces over here. I've got my RAM and my ROM. I've got keyboard input, uh, PS2, or sorry, a, a two-line LCD output, uh, SD card, and a bunch of other SPI type of functionality, um, some initial coding to, to make it work and do some testing with it. Uh, and that's that's all been coming along. I, I'm actually quite happy with the progress that I've made on it. It's, it's come along pretty well. Um, my goal, though, is to now maybe transition this off the breadboards and onto a PCB. And back a handful of videos, I got into this. And this PCB here really was the first run at trying to get the 286 running on a PCB instead of the breadboard. And this was uh, not something that turned out well. Uh, it ended up that my pinout on this processor in the socket was not correct. And so that was kind of an instant stop. I really couldn't take this much further without some pretty uh, heavy bodge work, which I, I didn't want to pursue. So that then brings me to today. And I have a new package. And I'm going to go ahead and open this up. This is the new board that I'm going to start putting together here. You know, let me see if I can get this opened up. Now this board is a bit bigger, as you're going to be able to see here pretty quickly. Okay, I have five of these. I'm just going to start out by grabbing one of these and set the others off to the side. And uh, just let's take a look at what we have here. First of all, you can notice it is a bit wider and it's a little bit taller. And I'll just set this right here momentarily and we can kind of take a look at this one. This is a pretty big board. Uh, so hopefully uh, I'll find that this socket, the one that was down here before, uh, is the proper pinout. So that's going to be my first step. And I'm going to kind of build up the same way. I'm going to go little by little and just see if there's a point at which I run into major issues or not. Um, now, I do realize I probably could compress this footprint. I do have it spread out, though, somewhat to just to really accommodate all of these tracks. Uh, so there are a lot of tracks on here, a lot of signals that I have to get uh, spread out. Definitely could improve the layout of this, but uh, this is what it is. Uh, it's, it's fairly big. I think at some point, probably my next revision, if I can make this version work and learn from it, figure out what I've not done right or could do better, I'm then going to refactor this into probably an ATX form factor so that I can fit it into an ATX uh, computer case or chassis. Uh, I did that with my 65816 build, and I, and I actually liked that. Again, it ends up being a pretty decent sized form factor, but I think by the time I have all of this, I have some ISA slots. I'll take some of the functionality from my clock and reset card and put it right into the system. You know, that's going to take up that, that size of a system board, whether it's a regular ATX or maybe a mini ATX form factor. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. But that's the cart before the horse right now because I need to see if I can just get this basic PCB working. Uh, so that's what I'm going to start getting into here. Um, maybe just as a, a note as I get into this, I did uh, put together an additional one of these uh, power reset clock cards. Uh, so this is ready to go. I'll be using that uh, in conjunction here so that I can bring in my clock and reset signals into this pin header. That will be the source of my power also, so I'll, I'll jump her from here to right here. So I'll get my power, my reset, my clock coming from this card for now. And I think I'm going to start with just getting the processor, the clock generator, the bus controller, and then I suppose I will need my latches working. So I'll come down here and get, I need three of those latches to get my address up here and see if I can get my address showing up.
and uh, seeing that I get the jump to an FFF FE. Uh, so FFFFE is what I should be jumping to. I just want to see if I get that much. And maybe I can see if I'm getting the CODI, MIO, S1, and S0 outputs. Uh, so I'm just going to assemble the first parts of this and see what we uh, can get out of this. So at this point, I do notice uh, the first problem, and in my schematic, I have these bar graphs facing up and these facing down, uh, but in the process, I did not swap the order of the pins. And what that means is that within each of these eight segments, uh, they are backwards. Um, so when I turn this on, um, now the Plus side, everything appears to be working as far as I would expect at this point. So I'm seeing activity on these four signals coming out of the processor. Uh, I am getting to the point where this latches uh, the addresses. And if I actually just pause it, uh, maybe I'll, I'll reset it and I'll, I'll pause it at that point. So let me hit reset. Okay, so I hit reset with a little bit faster clock. And this is going through its reset sequence, which takes uh, whatever it is, 30 to 40 cycles. But now notice I should have these four on and these four off. Basically, these are reversed. These are reversed, which you can't tell. And these are reversed, which you can't tell. Um, so I am getting output there. So that's good. I just for now will have to do a little bit of mental gymnastics to understand that these are backwards. So I have an FFFFFE. And that's how I'm going to have to read this for now, unfortunately. My data should be correct. It's just these are reversed because of how I had it laid out physically on my schematic and didn't change the order of those pins. Probably not a big deal because at some point I'm just going to pull these jumpers anyways and disable and not use those. But this is a good sign so far. So, so far, mostly so good.
Okay, at this point, I am quite happy. So the system seems to be running. I have currently in a 32 megahertz oscillator. Again, I'm going through a flip-flop here before I come into the system. So I'm bringing a 16 megahertz into the system, which means my processor is running at half of that, which would be 8. I did, for the fun of it, put in a 36, and it also seems to be working. Uh, so I'll do testing later. I still don't have any of my resistors on the bus, the external bus. I'm really not using a whole lot on the external bus yet. I don't have any internal bus resistors. That was a design change I had made after I had ordered this board. So if I decide I want to put those in, I'll have to do that later. <clears throat> but at this point, uh, it seems that with this 8 megahertz set the processor clock, things are working fine. Uh, so if I uh, turn it off, well, first I'll set it to uh, just a manual, uh, not a manual clock. I'll do a 555 and about that fast, and I'll just hit reset. Um, and maybe I'll turn it off just so you can see from the, uh, the cold start. We'll see if it makes it through. Uh, so I've got the clock going fairly fast for the 555. Uh, but we'll, we'll run through and, and I can see it's uh, reading ROM, it's reading RAM, uh, it's writing RAM. It's using my PPI number one. Here's my standard four signals coming out of my processor, CODI, MIO, S1, and S0. And uh, you can see that it's initializing my LCD. It's working through that routine. You know, I don't have it running super fast right now, so that just takes a little bit of time. Um, while I'm waiting for that, I did tweak this card a little bit. I changed the capacitor value on the 555. So now my 555 can go up to 2 kilohertz. And if I put a 1 megahertz crystal in oscillator, I can have it or you know drop it through this counter all the way down to 2 kilohertz. So I have the full spectrum now. I can go from really, really slow. Like if I turn the 555 all the way down and I go through the counter it's maybe once a minute. I mean, it's really slow. Um, and then I can go all the way up to you know, half of whatever this oscillator is. So in that case, if I had a one megahertz in there, I could go all the way up to 500 kilohertz. So I can go from really slow to 500 uh, pretty effectively. And I can obviously put in a much faster oscillator like I've done here, a 32. And now I can see it's it's up and running. And right now it's just spinning through a loop. So, uh, And as a reminder, these are backwards so that's a, a fix I'll have to make later but honestly once I go to the full oscillator at this speed you know these aren't even useful neither are these um, and I didn't did not make a way to turn these off uh, I can do that just by updating my PSOC I guess I could just tell it not to output these are being driven off of the PSOC uh, so that's maybe something I could consider doing um, and also I don't have any latching or transceivers or anything that would go between the PSOC and the LEDs. It's just directly driving them. And I have a really small 3.3K resistor that is uh, here, so it's not pulling a lot of a lot of current. These are pretty dim LEDs, but that's intentional. I didn't want it to annoy me. Hello world, that is working. So escape. Now, you'll probably notice a few things. I don't have my Nano hooked up yet, so uh, anything that would require my Nano, like writing to the PC, is not going to work. I don't have in these three chips, which are helping to collect extra signals, my internal data bus or other control signals to send to the Arduino Mega. But I suppose I, I have everything. I have the VIA in place. I could start reading the SD card. Uh, I know that... Well, what I know is working at this point is RAM. I know the ROM processor is working. I know this is working. This is a PPI number one because my keyboard is working. Also, I don't know if you can hear or not, that PC uh, post speaker is working fine. Uh, you know, I've got a little knob to control the volume on that, and it's being amplified with a little LM386. Uh, the other PPI that I have down here is my keyboard input, so I know that's working. Uh, I don't have any calls to the math coprocessor yet, so I'll have to test that, uh, which is sitting right here, sorry. My interrupt controller I know is working because when I press a key, it's firing that interrupt. So really, the things I need to test yet would be the math coprocessor, 
and to get all of my SPI stuff running. And I'll get a mega put on here. I'll get a nano put on here. I'll fill in the rest of these caps. You know, we, most of these ICs I put dual, a 0.1 and a 0.01 microfarad. And for now, I just put in the 0.1 microfarad caps everywhere. Uh, I probably will disconnect all of these LEDs because they're quite pointless uh, once I get to the oscillator. And uh, since this has fired up and is working, uh, I probably won't even use those. Um, these I can leave, but again, you know, they're just going to pretty much look like that unless I drop down to the 555 and then I can watch what's going on here. And if I want to really slow it down and, you know, I can, that's just the straight off the 555 through the flip flop is a pretty good speed so that when I run that, you know, I can really just kind of watch what it's doing. So right now it's going through its internal processor reset. You know, I'm getting all, all Fs on the address. And then once it gets through, what was it, 40 cycles, now it's starting to go through and read from my ROM. And then I'll see that it's going to move on and read and write to RAM. And it's going to use my PPI as it gets going here. And that's pretty slow. So I'm just going to pick up the pace of that a little bit. But I can see all of that's working. Um, it's still booting up, so my keyboard isn't going to work. Maybe I will turn this up a little bit faster. Okay, so at that point, I'm just going to back it off a little bit. It should just be basically running through a loop. So you know, when I hit a key, I can see it's doing a bunch of things. And I don't know if it was finished booting up and I had pressed some, some things before, so that probably didn't help anything. But I'll play around with that. I'm going to go back to the oscillator can here and I'll just hit reset. And that is working. I think I might have to do a little bit of tweaking on my keyboard. Um, so when it comes to the keyboard, the PS2 input, I'm, I'm pulling that here. But then there's a diode and resistors and capacitors up here that I can adjust. Uh, so I might play around with that uh, and just see uh, if, uh, like right now, that's actually working pretty well. But I had noticed it had picked up a, the wrong key sequence at some point in there where I got a question mark I, that I wasn't expecting. So I'll have to test that and see if I can, like there I hit a 5 and I got a question mark. So I might have to do a little bit of uh, tweaking uh, on that, but I'll look into that later. I, I think that's a pretty minor thing. And it's probably a capacitor or uh, resistor value. There's like a 33K resistor in this circuit along with a capacitor. And I didn't have the capacitor, one of the capacitors I didn't have what I needed in electrolytic, so I put in a different, is it a tantalum? It's still a polarized capacitor, but I've got that in there instead. And I ordered some electrolytics uh, to put in here ultimately. And I, I suppose the tantalum is probably just fine in there. And if I can get all of this working comparable to my breadboard, then I'm going to come back in and put in the ISA slots and see if I can't start working on my video card. And speaking of video card, I do have that video card PCB in and ready to start uh, building out and seeing if I can make it work. So it'll basically just sit in here like this. Uh, not real pretty, but uh, it's fine for what I'm doing right now. So I'll come back to that and see if, if uh, I've had any success in making this uh, design and if I can get that to work or not. 8 megahertz PCB is running. And like I said, I think everything's working. So clock generator I know is working. The bus controller is working. The only thing I have not tested is a call to the math coprocessor, which would be really easy. All I have to do is uncomment that in my code to have it actually call that test. Right here, math coprocessor, this is my, my pick, my programmable or peripheral priority interrupt controller or programmable interrupt controller are the two names it goes by but my math coprocessor right here 
Okay, so I think that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. And in the next video, I will try to populate uh, really the rest of this and see where that gets me and do some other testing along the way to see how things are working. You know, the SPI is a really good test because there's a lot going on with that. So if I can read from the SD card and uh, I'll have to mount my little OLED screen and that seven character display. Uh, let's see, I've got the seven character display header there. The OLED screen I had added after I ordered this, and so there's no header for that, but I can just pop right in to these headers, which is nice, because all of my SPI pins are coming off of this via, and I've made plenty of headers that I should be able to add in that little OLED screen, and just, I don't know, I'll just stick it somewhere on the board here. And I'll get my seven character display. I'll probably get some mounts and get this actually mounted to an underboard uh, just so it's a nice solid you know this pcb isn't that thick so it, it flexes and i'd rather not have that so i'll put it on standoffs like i did with this little board and probably mount that and this just to an, an underlying board and maybe give myself some room for some breadboards underneath if i want to continue to add in things with the breadboards i think that's it for this video thanks for watching